I always say to people about the mentality of a bodybuilder, you have to have, something has to be triggered inside of you. You can't be normal. You know, you have to have that satisfaction of never being satisfied because you always want to be better. You always want a better physique. You have to push yourself beyond limitations. You look at some guys that potentially could be the best physiques in the world, but they don't have the mental capability to push themselves. Mentally, you have to, you have to be, I, I think, a little crazy. You don't understand the benefits of being a normal person until you look at someone like me who, you know, can't buy clothes off the shelf, can't eat normal places to eat, can't ride in certain size cars, can't ride in certain size airplane seats, going to hotels, overseas, staying in small beds, trying to fit in small showers. It's hard to shop, it's hard to go out to eat, it's hard to travel. So, I mean, when you're 290 pounds, it's very difficult to do a lot of things. You know, you're so abnormal, I mean, it's compared to what people are used to seeing. People laugh because they just never see anyone so huge, you know. It's hard to hide it. And, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't wear big baggy clothes. A lot of times I wear more form-fitting stuff. And, and uh, you know, people, people don't, it's not the norm. You have certain places where you grow up and you're like, I want to be there. I mean, this is one of those places. I came to Vegas the first time in 97. I fell in love with it, you know. And that was before it was built up even the way it is now. But what other place can you go in 24 hours a day? You just wake up and decide, I want to go do this or I want to go do that. Like, I want to eat. I want to go work out. I want to go see a movie. You know, I want to go to the supermarket. I want to go eat at this restaurant. You know, it's just, you can do anything you want, pretty much. You can have sushi till 6 in the morning. I don't know any place in, in the world, really, that, that that's, you know, on a consistent basis that you can do that stuff. I like the fast tempo of Vegas. I couldn't live in a slow environment. People always ask me, are you ever going to move back to Man? I could never go back to the slow base, you know? People ask me, how do you train and focus in Vegas when there's so many outside things pulling at you and I think that I thrive on that I love to be able to know that most people can't do that I mean I, I love to be able to to have that at my fingertips even though I never take advantage of it it gives me more drive being in a place that's so actively just crazy and I'm still so focused on what I do it's, it's kind of like the opposite thinking a little bit you know Here we are. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up, Jason? What's going on, man? All right, pull-ups. Shirts off. Kelly, you're getting all swolled up. <laughs> I gotta do something for the Olympia. I'm gonna put bodybuilding.com in the back of my head. Jay Cutler trainer. <laughs> yeah. I got big over like a couple of months. So, you taking it down again? Just yeah, like you did last time? You gotta shave my face too. Keep, uh, keep the top? Yeah, yeah, just uh, a little tight, you know, tight at the bottom. Right. Nice and clean, like. Like a taper, right? One of the yeah, taper, taper again? You know, I find myself nowadays, I don't even touch my hair in the morning. I get up, that's what my hair looks like. And then I jump in the pool. Traveling and being Jay Cutler, it's not an easy thing. Everywhere you go, you're noticed and of course you're in demand. People say, what do you do for a living? I said, I eat, sleep, and train, and that's it. I kind of joke like that because it does seem like that a lot of times, but there is some fun built in there. But I never looked at myself and said, 
I'm so obsessed because I always seem to have some sort of balance in there and I always realized that this is a career and obviously if you go at it full tilt all the time you're gonna burn yourself down so you have to set a certain pace for yourself to the point where you're continually moving forward and being great no, no, no. I'm gonna take a shower and not clean up. The Olympic chair. We should get it. What's going on with the shirts? Um, I just called Kevin actually, so he is gonna call me back. He, they should, everything should be done this week. Um, like I know, but this tomorrow, week meaning what? Tomorrow, Wednesday, the latest. I always, honestly, I, I believe they're done. Usually, like I show up at like when he wants between, to. No, nine and ten. When he wants to show up. <laughs> nine and ten. It I depends if he goes out the night before. No, I don't even go out anymore. I just work at night. That's it. <laughs> Every day it's different. You know, I say pay this bill. Okay, you're gonna call these people. It's you know, it's literally I sit in the kitchen and I scream to him. Hey, you know, do this, do that. You know, yeah, so yeah. he's trying to do a job that probably takes three or four people, and for a 21 year old kid to be able to do that, like. I mean, it takes a lot of his time. He works six days a week at least, you know, sometimes seven. You know when you, when you think you've seen someone work hard, like, oh man, he works hard. And then you meet someone like Jay and you're like, this is a whole nother ball game. You know, it's not like we're operating a huge operation over here. I mean, I'm running out of my house and my garage and yes, there's a lot of space, but you know, we have, we have day-to-day -day things that we need to get done. And I'm only home on certain times. I, I traveled this year extensively. And I, we had one or two days to get stuff done when I was home. And we rely on other people and it's impossible to do that. So we try to do everything, you know, on our own. What do I overnight that? I've never overnight anything. I know you like to spend money, dude. I see how much it costs. It costs 30, 35 bucks to send a damn poster. No, it doesn't. What are you talking about? It costs about? you 35 Six. bucks, that one poster costs. No, it didn't. I saw it. Did I not see I it? I saw it. No, it didn't cost me $35. I'll show you right what now. What did I say about that poster that day? Don't lie. Yes, I did see that it said that. Oh, you said that? I have no choice. That's what they choose. Whoa, what, okay, was it a poster in a large box? No, it was a poster. By itself? Yes. And it cost $35? Yes. Okay, I'll pull it up right now. And if it's $35, then you, can have, okay. you can have my check. <laughs> yeah. You can have my whole it's check. It's gonna come out of your pay. What? Don't start, Monique. <laughs> I'm in a bad mood. Even Larry said I came out in a bad mood this morning. That's the thing, you run with, with, with the crew and this time when we play and this time when we work and this is this is all business now. I mean, this is, I admit half my life is play time, three quarters of my life is play time, but when it comes down to, to, to get the business and, and the business is now, I mean, there's no, we have no time for fun. You know, I've been a four-time champ, you know, and I've been six-time runner-up. And I'm the greatest bodybuilder ever. There's no question, I feel that I'm the greatest. I still want to compete at my best, even at the age that I'm at. And, you know, people say past your prime. I mean, I don't know if there's any past your prime. When I'm still competitive, you don't want to think about that. You're not going to go into a show and say, well, I'm past my prime. I'm just doing it for the, you know, just to stand up there. That's not how an athlete or a champion bodybuilder, you know, trains for a competition or things. They always want to think about winning and being your absolute best. failure at this point you know I've done it all there's never gonna be a day that passes that I'm gonna step out and people are gonna aren't gonna know who Jay Cutler is I don't see it ever happening
Ron, what's up? Oh, oh no. Now I'm back in Vegas for the week, and I think Dave's coming next this coming weekend. He's going to shoot some training stuff, and then I shoot with Burnell next week, I think, for uh, some features. Hey, what's the name of that pizza place next to uh, Kaizen? I like more lounge-type places like um, Hyde Lounge at Bellagio. Monique! Or Trist at the Wynn. No, no, I don't go to strip clubs. I got a stripper pole in my bedroom. I don't need uh, strip clubs. You know, when you have like, you know, 30 something inch thighs and you've got, you know, 22 and a half inch arms and you've got a 19 inch neck and a broad shoulder, it's difficult to find things other than tank tops and shorts. Everything's custom. I mean, I can't fit into normal sleeves. Obviously the dress shirts are tailored, you know, like the button up shirts. My suit jackets, I think are 58 or 60 or something like that. I mean, it's crazy. If you look at what's considered an ideal drop to a, a manufacturer of suits, it's a six inch drop. That's the difference between your chest and your waist. I've got some guys that, you know, are fairly serious bodybuilders and they've got a 10 inch drop and uh, Jay has 20. It kind of defies the physics of what you can do with fabric, you know, in a constructed sense to go from here to here. All right, Jay, you ready to go to work? I want stuff tight now, remember. Okay. Okay, so 54. And you were 57. That's a big difference. Feet together. Wow, that's about five inches less, Jay. That's pretty serious. I won my first Olympia heavier than I weigh right now. I was competing against Ronnie, you know, 273. I mean, when I came back and won in 2009, I was 254. It's all illusion, you know. 37. Actual thigh, 29. 19. Go ahead and flex. 21 and a half. You've lost a lot of weight, so we're, we're gonna we're gonna be doing some different things here. Yeah, it's hard to hide it. You know, that's the one thing about being a professional bodybuilder is where other people can hide, you know, athletes, because, you know, unless they're like real, real famous faces, you just can't hide the physique. I mean, and the thing is, is like, you know, a lot of bodybuilders change from on season to off season. Like I don't change a whole lot. I'm pretty much visible. The hair's the same. The face stays the same, you know? And you know, I'm a unique look for a lot of the bodybuilders, you know? You know, there's not a lot of huge, you know, big blonde white guys, you know. Oh, look at all those zits. I'm gonna pop them after. Okay. How bad is it growing in now? Oh my God. Bad? You're like a chia pet. <laughs> you know, I never had hair on my back until I started shaving, you know that? When I got ready for my first show when I was 18, it's like when I started shaving my back, it's like I turned into a gorilla. Larry told me to do Nair. No. Let's bless this child. I'm gonna tell him he has to shave my armpits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Larry! I need your help! Larry! <laughs> Dude, I need you to shave my armpits. Oh, no. You got it, you're good, she's good. Are you sure? Yeah. No, look at my armpits. There's nothing in there. <laughs> my lower back you did too. You know, when you're my size, you never think you're small. Like, I like the way I look now. You know, I'm always in decent shape and I always check myself out. I never look at my face though. I mostly look at the physique, you know, I flex the abs and... <laughs>
as you've seen the progression, you know, almost 50 years of bodybuilding in the Mr. Olympia competition, you know, we saw the days of Arnold where they weren't so, con so conditioned or so big, and nowadays, I mean, the guys are so big and so conditioned. There's so many variables and, and bodybuilding has become so scientific in trying to tune the body in to, to you know, show the best conditioning with the most size. Uh, have I gotten too big? You know, bodies aren't made to be as strong as I guess that uh, Mr. Olympia competitors become. safety briefing before we go on the range. We're gonna treat every gun as if it's loaded at all times, even if you know it's unloaded. Always keep your trigger finger off the trigger till you're on target and ready to fire. And always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Pretty crazy. <laughs> if at any time you hear someone call out, cease fire. Please stop shooting, take a finger off the trigger, put the gun down on the counter, step back away from it. Put your body weight forward. It helps you to absorb the recoil. You're a gang stunner. I know. Single shot, full out. You can never teach anyone training advice. It's always the business, because everyone wants to make the money. They want to be a superstar and look like a superstar. The magazines expose you as a superstar because you're featured with the muscles and the look, you know. But financially, they want the backup of that. And that's... That's what I have. I have all the tools to create that, and a lot of people have come to me for that opportunity. Yeah, we may stumble, but we always land higher and get to where we need to be. Even when I was smaller, I hate to say small, but I look at these guys and still say, I'm still the best and still the greatest and still the biggest name in bodybuilding. Suck it up, suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Mentally, you have to be, I think, a little crazy. People approach me and they say, Jay, what's the secret? What's the secret? What's the secret? I don't like to eat anything. If you ask me what my favorite food is, I don't have a favorite food. I don't look forward to any meal at all. You're a living legend. That's what's amazing about what I do. And I'll tell you, Jay Cutler's greatest of all time.